lot of reasoning in math. And today we're going to talk about logical reasoning. And we're going to start it off with our conditional statements. We're going to turn them into if-then statements. And we're going to draw some conclusions from that. And then we'll eventually lead into some counterexamples and prove some of these are false by the use of those. So first things first, a conditional statement. There are statements that we can write as an if-then statement. So if I look at my statement here in the green, the ground is wet when it rains. I could write that as an if-then statement. I just break it up. I could say, if the ground is wet, then it rained. And each part of this has a name to it. The if always is called the hypothesis. So my hypothesis in this case would be the ground is wet. And I draw a conclusion from that. If I think if my hypothesis is the ground is wet, then my conclusion would be it rained. So the if, the if goes with the hypothesis and the then goes with the conclusion. Let's try a couple of examples here. It says, identify the hypothesis and conclusion of each statement. So my first one, if it is raining, then John and Tim will not play softball. Kind of like our last example. Well, this first part, if it is raining, there's my hypothesis. So I can write that out. It is raining. Followed by our conclusion. That's with the then, right? John and Tim will not play softball. There's my conclusion. And I would write that out. In this case, since I got it here, I'm just going to underline it. Uh, and I don't need to write it out. In your assignment, you'll need to write it out, though, since you can't write in your book. Uh, for the next one, it says, if 7y plus 5 equals 26, then y equals 3. Well, I'm just stating the hypothesis and conclusion. For the hypothesis, same thing. It's the if part of it. 7y plus 5 equals 26, which means my conclusion is the then. The conclusion would be y equals 3. So pretty straightforward identifying the hypothesis and conclusion. Well, now let's do that, but also write the if-then statement given our conditional statement. And my best advice for this is to write, write the if-then statement first. So for example, I eat light meals. Well, let's write it in an if-then statement. First of all, I got to... I have to eat a meal first to conclude that it's going to be a light meal. So I would say, if I eat a meal, then it is light. Or then it is a light meal. However you would like to word it, then it is light. After you write it out, now you can just underline the parts, the uh, hypothesis and conclusions. You don't have to rewrite them. If I eat a meal, so I eat a meal, that's my hypothesis. I'll just put my H there for hypothesis. Then it is light. It is light is my conclusion. So if I eat a meal, my conclusion is it's going to be light based on that statement. And I can do the same thing for math down here. For the equation, 8 plus 5a equals 43, a equals 7. Well, it's kind of like that last page we looked at. If my equation, if 8 plus 5a equals 43, then a equals 7. And the same thing. I'll underline my hypothesis, the part that goes with the if. Underline my conclusion, the part that goes with the then. Then I don't have to rewrite them out. Okay? So write your if-then statement and then decide which one's the hypothesis and which one is the conclusion. All right, let's use deductive reasoning here. It says determine a valid conclusion that follows the statement below for each condition. If a valid conclusion does not follow, write no valid conclusion and explain why. And we're going to use deductive reasoning. So deductive reasoning basically says if the if is true, then we're saying the conclusion is true. Or the then is true, I guess. Put the then there. So that's my deductive reasoning. If the if is true, then we say that the conclusion is usually true. So here's my if-then statement. If one number is odd and the other number is even, then their sum is odd. Okay, and that works. 
But now let's look at an example and decide if it's valid or not. The two numbers are 5 and 12. Well, let's take a look. 5 is odd. 12 is even. So that's true. So I'm guessing this is going to be valid according to deductive reasoning. And I could check it with my statement. Is there some odd? Yeah. So it's valid. By deductive reasoning, I know that is valid. What about this? The two numbers are 8 and 26. Well, 8 or 20, neither of them is odd, is it? They're both even, aren't they? Even, even. So I already know this isn't the case, so this is not valid. According to my if-then statement. Right? Because one number needs to be odd. Now it seems pretty simple. That's all we're looking for. Just to see if the, the if part is true by what you're given to make it valid. Well, there's cases where we can make the if true and the then ends up being false. And we can do that by providing a counterexample. So if I look at this first one, A, if x plus y is greater than xy, then x is greater than y. So I'm thinking it's true right away, but there's cases when I can provide a counterexample. And a counterexample is when the if is true, I can provide a counterexample to make the then false. That's what a counterexample does. So for this first one, since it's an, equ uh, an inequality, I can plug in some numbers to try to make, make it false here. So let's think about this. If x plus y is greater than xy, let me just try something here. We'll go if 5 and 1 is greater than x times y, because 5 times 1 is 5, right? 5 times 1. So that's really 6 is greater than 5. That works. Well, I said x was 5 and y was 1. 5 is greater than 1. So those are both true. So that doesn't work. So let's get rid of that. Well, what else can I do? Can I bring in some negatives here? Let's try to make x. Oh, we'll make it a, a positive. Oh, let's make it a negative. Because over here, I want to make this false. So I wanna, I'm going to give x a negative. So I'm going to say x is negative 5. And I'm going to say y is 4. Let's see what happens. So let's use my original statement here. If x plus y is greater than xy. So negative 5 plus 4 is greater than negative 5 times 4. So that gives me negative 1 over here is greater than negative 20. So that works. This is true. Then x is greater than y. Well, I said x is negative 5. x is not greater than y, is it? Negative 5 is not greater than 4. So this part is false. So I just provided a counterexample. X could be negative 5, and Y could be 4. So my if is true, my hypothesis is true, but I provided a counterexample that proved it false, that X would not be greater than Y in every single case. That might have been a little confusing. This next part might make a little more sense, using some words. If Chloe is riding the Ferris wheel, then she is at the state fair. If Chloe is riding the Ferris wheel, she could be... Somewhere else, right? She could be at Valley Fair. She could be at an amusement park. So I would say, Chloe is at Valley Fair. So just because she's on a Ferris wheel doesn't mean she's at the state park. So my counterexample would be, Chloe's at Valley Fair. She could still be on the Ferris wheel. So you're just providing a counterexample. So remember, counterexample to make the then false. To make the then false. Here's your assignment. We'll see you tomorrow.